the Vietnam War and the push for US involvement was a result of the Gulf of Tonkin incident. A lie. The Iraq War famously is a result of lies. Wars in Somalia are a result of lies. The Second World War and the German invasion of Poland was a result of carefully constructed lies. That is war by media. Let us ask ourselves of the complicit media, which is the majority of the mainstream press, what is the average death count attributed to each journalist? It's Randy Critical here, Randy Critical Live on the Fly here in New York City. Um, and uh, day uh, one of the Julian Assange appeal. And um, we have a wonderful show today. Uh, it is an expanded version of uh, Randy Critical Live on the Fly. Uh, we have a lot of guests on today. Um, and uh, we had a wonderful show the other day, by the way. I'm sorry that. Uh, uh, Many of you were unable to show up, uh, but uh, the place on paper was completely jammed, sold out, standing room only, uh, at least until the show started. Um, hi, Reggie. Good afternoon. You know, we have a long show today, and uh, we have two wonderful guests. We're going to go across the pond and introduce our first guest, and that is, he was just here a couple of weeks ago, uh, and that is Afshin Ratanzi, who is the host of my favorite TV show in the world, and that is Going Underground, which is on every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday on RT. Uh, welcome, uh, Afshin. Hey there, Randy. Oh, yeah, good. We can hear you very well over there. <laughs> and uh, a, a gentleman who you know very well, uh, and he doesn't really need an introduction, so I'm not going to give him one because I lost two minutes already uh, at the very start. Uh, the great Roger Waters. Roger, do we have you? Hello. Just kidding. What'd you, I didn't hear hey, it. Randy. Hello. No, we have you. We have. Kidding. Do you two guys know each other? Never met this guy. Yeah, of no. course we do. Is that, that's Paul uh, Robeson. You introduced Paul Robeson at the recent Assange uh, gig you did, Randy. Well, you know, Afshin, you're a student of U.S. history, and you're very culturally uh, uh, attuned uh, to U.S. history and, and, and uh, U.S. Uh, music and everything uh, U.S., uh, more than most Americans that I know, uh, except for Roger. So uh, wouldn't you say Roger fits in that category, his activism? I mean, how many... Absolutely. Absolutely. He risked, he risked so much more than probably we all know for uh, causes like free speech, freedom of the press, and uh, marginalized peoples all over the world, literally all over the world. Well, I know one thing. He's a big fan of yours because we talk about it. Uh, Roger, uh, you liked RT and you like uh, Afshin show. I love RT and I adore Afshin, obviously. And yeah. um, thank you for those few kind words. I'm, I'm lying down. I try to figure out how I could pat myself on the back without getting up. But no, I'm going to fuck it. I'm going to forget it. I'm not going to. I'm just going to lie here and listen to you two chatting. No, uh, no, no, no. You're you're you're, you're taking over. I'm a actually going to. You're the co-pilot now, and uh, I wanted you to ask oh, yeah. Afshin what happened today in London. Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, it's actually been a terrible, terrible day, and it's terrible for Julian Assange's friends, obviously. But I mean, it's it's kind of difficult to even appreciate what his children is. Uh, partner, his closest friends must be going through. I know that uh, the uh, Joe Biden's attorney general, Merrick Garland, was testifying uh, in, uh, in Washington today. I don't think he mentioned Julian Assange once, the most famous 
publisher and journalist in the world. This time, and uh, I monitored proceedings because we got a remote link to it, despite Twitter censorship. Uh, any of your listeners, if you look up Assange and another word on Twitter, you'll see that instead of the word Assange, it picks up the word arrested. What is going on with Twitter? Is it censoring the name Assange? Anyway, we finally got into the remote link. And interestingly, this time, it's been commented by others, Michael Isikoff from Yahoo News, who did that uh, uh, story about 30 unnamed officials from the U.S. military industrial complex saying that Assange uh, could have been kidnapped or killed here in London. Uh, he tuned in. The Guardian tuned in. What is that newspaper, The Guardian? WikiLeaks' his old partner that then chose to defame Julian Assange in the most horrific betrayal uh, that they could. So more mainstream media actually bothering to look. But I got to tell you, I don't know what it's like uh, in New York or on the East Coast, but certainly in Britain, uh, they were more interested in the so-called Facebook whistleblower keen to censor uh, Facebook than uh, it wasn't even in the headlines. Uh, Julian Assange's uh, hearing, which we must remind the viewers, is the Joe Biden administration appealing against a decision of a British court uh, not to extradite uh, Julian Assange to a Virginia hearing under the Espionage Act that could see him uh, die in a USA jail. Uh, Roger, did you see any coverage uh, in the last 24 hours of this, you know, very important uh, case, this, what, what is really a show trial? Have you seen hey, any no, coverage? What a, no, what a surprise. I've been searching for it everywhere. And what a strange, what a strange thing it is. I wonder what's going wrong. No, this is why I'm looking forward to hear what... I've, I'm, I'm lying here with my stomach in a complete knot because Afshin said, terrible day for everybody who loves Julian Assange or cares for him or cares about free speech and all the rest. But he didn't tell us what happened. What happened today? Basically, the uh, Crown Prosecution Service here acting for the Joe Biden administration and uh, Merrick Garland and your Justice Department over there, he, he tried to use Julian Assange's partner and his children against him uh, to, to get the decision for him not to be extradited to the USA against him. And we got to see a few shots of Julian Assange in a room. We could see a guard behind him. There was a sort of blue room. He looked... He looked terrible. I mean, he, 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 his head was in his hands. Um, he walked out uh, quite soon after he arrived. He wasn't there initially. Um, he appeared in silence. Um, someone said he hadn't been able to uh, be uh, allowed to attend, but I think it was ill health. He, um, anyone who knows Julian Assange will be heartbroken uh, by how he looked. The strange rules of court reporting here, and I know you've uh, had Craig Murray on your uh, show who's now in jail. Uh, strange rules here mean that I'm not able to give you a photograph or uh, send you video of Julian Assange. I, could have to, I would have to draw a cartoon of him uh, for it to be legal in this country for you to see the most famous journalist in the world uh, look as tortured as the United Nations claims uh, he is. They tried to overturn evidence uh, about um, mental illness and torture that has been confirmed by the UN by saying there are good, uh, effectively, there are good asylums that he can be taken to from any supermax prison he might be uh, sent to uh, were he to be uh, taken from this country to your country. You know, I was following uh, James Dolman, who is a court reporter, uh, and the last thing he posted was that, uh, that uh, what's his name, Lewis, the uh, Crown Prosecutor, James, James Lewis, uh, said uh, that the U.S. has guaranteed that to, the time that he has spent at Belmore should be taken uh, off of his prison time if he's convicted. So he'd go from 170 years down to 168, basically, is what they're saying. I, I mean, what what a ludicrous thing to say. And, and let me ask you, uh, did you see the judges at all, faces? It was, I mean, it was a really poor uh, sh camera shot. There was two camera shots of it. Um, I know that our, uh, uh, someone who appears on your show and a friend of, good friend of Rogers, John Pilger tweeted out that, uh, 
that he couldn't understand how James uh, Lewis QC, Queen's Counselor, sleeps at night as he as he read out. Uh, uh, I mean, things like mental health is not physical health. So there's another reason why he can be taken away. And we must remember, this is all following uh, a British decision, which actually surprised some, that said uh, he will... Um, He'll die if he uh, if he goes to the United States. Your uh, prison industrial complex is not safe yeah. for people to uh, be incarcerated in. Roger, um, you you've been involved in this case for a long time, although you have not visited Assange, uh, but uh, you have been one of his most uh, vocal uh, supporters. What uh, kicked off your support of Assange? When did you uh, actually get involved? Well, you know, back in two thousand. Seven. First of all, those uh, USM murdered those two Reuters journalists and those other civilians and tried to kill those children in that van in that part of Baghdad, whatever, what has come to be known as the collateral murder video. And uh, Chelsea Manning, to her eternal credit, um, passed the videos on to WikiLeaks, who, along with the New York Times and the Manchester Guardian and one or two other mainstream media, um, uh, outlets published them. So all of those people published film of American war crimes, and that is why they're hounding Julian Assange, they hope, to his death. That is why they are, because he reported war crimes. Not for all the other stuff that he reported, which was faintly embarrassing to all sorts of governments all over the world, doing his job correctly as the full of the state to give we, the people, the information that we need in order to be part of a democratic society. It's not for that. It's because somewhere they're scared that they may be held accountable for the terrible criminals that they are. OK, that George W. Bush is, that Rumsfeld was. I'm glad there were ladies from Code Pink from through Rumsfeld's final years shouting at him every time he went out in public. War criminal, what? Because he was. And they all are. So I know I'm rambling. Well, I'm no, you're not. Rambling. Well, I'm you're telling not. you how I got into it. Yes. Well, I saw that collateral damage footage, and it was just before I went on a worldwide tour of my piece, The Wall, which started in 2010. So I put the film into the show. It's in a song called Run Like Hell in the middle of, in the, middle of the Wall, as anybody, lots of people know that already. And everywhere we performed that footage, I published it too. I published that footage everywhere I went at about 120 decibels in, uh, on a 150-foot wide screen in the middle of the thing. So why aren't I? Why aren't I in prison? And why aren't the publishers of the Guardian newspaper and the publishers of the New York Times? Why single out Julian? I'll tell you why. Because Julian is effective. And Julian was the brave man who figured out the whole WikiLeaks idea and the way to use the internet in order to get this desperately important needed information that our governments are peopled by and run by deeply corrupt sociopaths who are murdering innocent people all over the globe. They desperately, ever since he did it, tried to silence him and they're still doing it. And unfortunately, because of people like Vanessa Berenser, the disgusting woman magistrate in London, and James Lewis, who should have QC ripped from his sleeve or whether, wherever they wear it, because they are not interested in the application of the rule of law. They're not interested in justice. They're not interested in habeas corpus. They're not interested in any of the things that we, the people, the people of the world, all of us, desperately need in order to stop those in power from destroying the fragile planet upon which we live. The whole thing, they're destroying it as hard as they can. Okay? 
so where did I start? You asked me why I did. So I put it in the show, and we did it for three years all over the world. And inevitably, I, I've, I've started following the story, and I've, I've followed it ever since. And I'm more and more disgusted by the way the powers that be behave with every second that passes. And the fact that that moron, Boris Johnson, hasn't freed Julian Assange from Belmarsh, what is the man doing in a high-security jail? He's committed no crime. One, a bail infringement. When they were trying to railroad him, and he was quite right to commit that single crime because he spotted that they were trying to get him to Sweden so that Sweden would extradite him to the United States so that they could kill him. It's disgusting beyond all measure. What, what flabbergasts me is that notwithstanding the great work, Randy, that you do and that Russia Today does and that Action does and that many, many other concerned people do, there are not millions of people in the street demanding that this bus stop. It also, well, no, it does, I nearly said it staggers me that Blinken and Merrick Garland and Joe Biden and the rest of them, the people who are apparently in power in the United States at the, at the moment, haven't said, hang on, stop. This is insane. And also deeply criminal. So I'll stop now, because that's a rather long answer to a very short question. But my fucking heart is breaking. And also, my world is being destroyed. My plan I live here as well. And they are destroying this planet. And part of the destruction of this planet is to not, is to deny well, so. we, the people, access to the information that we need to express our voices in the debate as to do we want to live or not. Sorry. We are talking with um, Roger Waters and... Um, and the uh, host of Going Underground, uh, Afshin Ratanzi. Afshin, um, let me ask you, you've interviewed uh, Julian Assange uh, many times uh, over the last uh, seven or eight years. Uh, you've gotten to know him. You've seen him when he was at his sharpest. What kind of journalist, to, to you as a journalist for the last 30 years, uh, does he represent in the world of journalism? Uh, he uh, is... Uh he, he, he is an amazing intellect. As Roger was saying, his idea of being able to uh, uh, formulate an invention to be able to uh, whistleblow on crimes that, uh, again, as Roger says, uh, potentially will destroy the earth. Uh, because don't forget, WikiLeaks uh, leaked not only information about um, manipulation of your election, in effect, by uh, uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, it also revealed uh, so much about the military-industrial complex, assassinations, war crimes, but also corporate uh, misdemeanors. And as, as Roger said, everyone is liable. Everyone should be listening to this. And, and, the, and the fact is, um, while uh, Roger and I have been uh, trying to cover uh, this uh, gross travesty of justice, at last, Every major free speech and uh, human rights organization in the world, every major one, was today, despite the media silence, the so-called mainstream media silence, has been saying what you're saying, Randy. They want him freed, and yet the media is not reflecting what all these, hu Amnesty International, some of these human rights groups, you know, over the years, people have accused them of being captured by um, elements of the security state in this country and in the USA. Uh, they've all come round. They're all on our side, as it were, on the side of free speech. And yet the so-called mainstream media is still trying to cover it up. And in a sense, uh, Julian Assange, who not only invented the idea of a, uh, an Internet um, way of doing journalism that will really give power to the people through information, he foresaw the dangers this will pose for elite power. He foresaw, I think some people at WikiLeaks never took him seriously, frankly. I mean, WikiLeaks is an organization, obviously, suffering uh, without him greatly. You know, we haven't seen many, many leaks uh, very recently uh, from the WikiLeaks website. I'm not sure um, 
uh, they've necessarily taken the right uh, path on uh, trying to campaign for Julian Assange's uh, freedom. But I know that some of them, they didn't take it seriously. But Julian Assange always did. He not only invented methods of being able to give information to people from uh, the global south and the epicenters of elite power, he also understood uh, what, would, what the dangers were to him personally. And uh, people didn't believe him. So-called uh, mainstream media journalists went, why don't you just leave the Ecuadorian embassy and walk out on the street? Why don't you just do this? And what, He knew. He knew that, uh, say, that collateral murder uh, video, which went around the world showing visually uh, the murder uh, by U.S. soldiers as just an emblem of the wars in, well, we've now seen them in uh, uh, Libya, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, and so many more in uh, Latin America and Africa. Uh, he, he knew what revealing that meant, and which is why Mike Pompeo, and which is why, of course, the case should be thrown out completely by Vanessa Baretza, given that the former U.S. Secretary of State said, we will consider de facto Julian Assange as a non-state -host, non hostile actor, and all his lawyers were being bugged by a CIA cutout. Uh, uh, we're talking with Afshin Ratansi. That's a very good point. Uh, can, can you two, uh, we have to take a news break here. Can I keep you guys both on uh, through the news break and come back on the other side uh, for a little bit longer? Are you, can you agree to that? Because this is such, it's going by so quickly and we start a little late. Sure, I'm okay with that. Are you okay I'll with that, Roger? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay. okay, we're going to go to a news break. I'm oh. Randy Critical. Randy oh. Critical live on the fly here on 99.5 FM Free Speech Radio in New York City, WBAI, WBAI.org. We're going to go to the news, uh, the national news uh, out of D.C., and we'll be right back in a few minutes. All right, don't go anywhere, folks, and you too, please don't leave. That was uh, Anton Dvorak, humoresque. I'm Randy Critical, Randy Critical, live on the fly on 99.5 FM in New York City. Uh, this is a special extended version of Live on the Fly. Uh, today is the first day of the show trial appeal hearing by the Biden administration against uh, Julian Assange or against the ruling that would allow Julian Assange to walk free. Uh, but uh, we're talking with Roger Waters and Afshin Ratanzi of uh, RT's Going Underground. Uh, welcome back, gentlemen. Um, I, I got to ask you about that. Does that really annoy you, uh, Roger, that the Biden administration has uh, continued where the Trump administration left off, the DOJ? Well, yeah, obviously. But, I, but I, do, I have to tell you, Randy, and I don't know if Afshin agrees, and I have a question for Afshin in a minute, but you, you can't take Joe Biden seriously. I mean, you just can't. And I was listening to the news and the fact that the Democrats are arguing with one another. There's an argument going on between the progressives and the, whoever the others are. And there, there, there is a progressive wing of the Democratic Party. There are five of them. They're called the squad. They're nearly all Muslim women, and they're in Congress. And they are the only hope for the future. They're the only people who speak any sense. There is no right and left in America. It's all far right of anywhere that I would consider, even faintly acceptable. That's another story. But, oh, God, wouldn't it be wonderful if they started behaving like human beings? They can't. They have to do as they're told. Who's telling them what to do? We'll probably never know. What I want to ask Afshin is this. What did the appalling James Lewis do to try and use Stella and the children uh, in, in the United States government's appeal against Beretz's mealy-mouthed uh, refusal to allow uh, Assange to be extradited at the end of the extradition proceedings? What did, what did he do to use them? I don't understand. 
Well, um, and I should just remind everyone that the British judge uh, didn't refuse the extradition on any of the free speech grounds that any normal uh, person no, uh, supporting the U.S. Constitution would uh, support. And I, and I should also say uh, this is at last a not left, not right, basic free, free speech uh, issue. Tucker Carlson on Fox News is more likely uh, to talk about free speech and Julian Assange than uh, anything supporting uh, the, uh, the Democrat Party of the U.S. Basically, the judge had previously said that she, uh, Vanessa Bright had said she had been uh, aware of uh, the fact that uh, Julian Assange had uh, fathered children. And uh, James Lewis QC was saying, no, you know what throws all this into doubt and why he should uh, die in the USA is because uh, she wasn't aware that children had been fathered. These children are the, are the reason. The, having these babies are the reason why he must go and die. And... Um, and that, that is a level of legal argument, let alone in a free speech case. Uh, I mean, how it must have upset uh, Julian's father, Gabriel Shipton, who I think was there in the, in the court. Um, and you can see some videos of him. Um, sorry, his, his brother, Gabriel Shipton, and his father, John Shipton. I, I, it's difficult to even imagine. I should say, by the way, I, you know, some of WikiLeaks is there. Christina Raffinson, names that one has to mention, like... Um, uh, yeah. Gavin McFadgen, who died, who was a mentor to Julian Assange, would that he would see what was going on, that they would stoop so low to say, because he had children that the judge wasn't aware of, even if that had been the case, therefore he must well, go and die. I, that all disgusts me, but they're scraping the bone of the barrel, obviously. But there's something that I really want to say, given this tiny platform and this important debate, and that is this. It is so blindingly obvious that neither Joe Biden nor Merrick Garland nor any of the American administration, nor Boris Johnson, nor any of the UK administration, as far as we can tell, with the exception of one or two Labour MPs, give a shit about human rights or free speech or the press or any of the things that they pretend to. The United States makes a huge propaganda um, play every day about being the bastion of liberty and freedom and caring about human rights and freedom. They couldn't care less. And they make that completely plain all the time. And this hounding of these innocent and extremely important journalists makes that point every second that he's still under lock and key. They don't care. They didn't care about the human rights of the Reuters cameraman and journalist in Beirut who were murdered by the U.S. government. They don't care about the human rights of any of the brown people that they murder all over the world. They certainly don't care about the human rights. It's funny that Ecuador should come up. and that it, Why was it the Ecuadorian embassy that Julian Assange um, um, stayed in for, for eight years, took refuge in? Because Ecuador had a president, I think he's called Rafael Correa at the time, who made him an Ecuadorian citizen and gave him protection from, from these attacks upon him. Because Correa does believe in human rights. He actually believes in them. The current president of Ecuador doesn't. Um, Lenin, what is that his name? Yeah, I can't, I've forgotten his full name. Lenin Marino. Lenin Marino. He doesn't. That's why he threw Julian Assange out of the Ecuadorian embassy because he is in cahoots with the, with the United States government that couldn't care less about human rights. So the fact that all the human rights organizations all over the world are now saying, you have to set this man free. The fact that, the United, that Joe Biden is ignoring them is so blindingly the only thing that he can possibly do, because Joe Biden doesn't care about your rights or my rights or anybody else's rights, except his own rights and the rights of the establishment and the powers that be. And it's blindingly obvious. And yet we let them pretend that they do for some reason or other. Well, Today, uh a friend of mine is being locked up in a prison. Probably in New Jersey. Or I'm not going to say any more about where it is. 
because he was a human rights lawyer. His name's Stephen Dontega. He's a human rights lawyer who represented 30,000 indigenous rainforest dwellers in northern Ecuador and has done for the last 25 years. And he has been sued by Chevron Corporation in a private prosecution, actually by a judge, Louis A. Kaplan, who's in the pocket of Chevron Corporation, and by another judge called Loretta Preska. And they're sending him to prison for contempt of court. And he's just had his re- appeal refused. Did he go to jail and today? For- Did- did he actually go to jail? He's going to jail today. The order came out. You're going to jail. Turn up at the jail today. Yeah, I know. He said it yesterday that he was going to jail. Huh? He's going today. Yeah. That's me. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yes. Uh, Afshin. So uh, anyway. Go ahead. What we have to understand is the judiciary in the United States and in the UK yeah. couldn't care less. What's up in It's driving me crazy. This is going ding, 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 ding. Oh, sorry. I'm going to stop again now because I'm taking well, up too much. Time. Well, you know, you just asked uh, Afshin a question. Afshin, you're the best host in the yeah. world. Do you have a question for uh, Mr. Waters? Well, I mean, I, I suppose, uh, you know, Lenin Moreno, before he allowed the US, CIA base in uh, Ecuador, might have been excused saying, the CIA and the U.S. were threatening me with uh, not funding us or sanctions or something, so I couldn't have health care there. One lesson, arguably, is that uh, if you uh, want to seek asylum, you go to a country with nuclear weapons, which is what Edward Snowden famously uh, did with the help of Julian uh, Assange. Um, as for uh, uh, Stephen Donziger, it just shows the power of uh, corporations. Uh, and and sadly, the evidence, um, the evidence that Roger just outlined, about without with a few honourable exceptions, I think in the U.S. Rand Paul, it's the libertarian right leading it there. Uh, with a few exceptions, the evidence suggests indeed none of the politicians care about free speech or a free press, and that goes with the squad too. Arguably, they're not they're not out there on every network saying that a trial in London means uh, that uh, anywhere in the world, whatever nationality you are, uh, you can be um, extradited and face 175 years in prison for saying things that the U.S. might be embarrassed by. Um, I, I, to ask Roger, well, I guess it relates to what we were first talking about. Uh, what is the reaction from his uh, colleagues in the music industry, say? Uh, to uh, all of this kind of thing and to the activism that you carry out because you obviously so desperately care for the marginalized and the dispossessed around the world. I mean, you hear about them caring for the environment and I do know that you have, um, I mean, a few, you know, celebrity friends uh, did campaign against the appalling uh, environmental destruction and the destruction of the um, indigenous peoples uh, in, in Ecuador. Oh, my goodness. Listen, I'm not going to single out my colleagues in the music industry because this runs right through all all professions or non-professions or through all of us. Why why is it that the choir doesn't swell to monumental proportions and take to the streets? The closest we've ever got global um, uprising against government policy was in 2003 when George Bush decided to invade Iraq and there were 30 million maybe people all over the world took to the streets to complain about it because they, the people, knew that it was a mistake of monumental proportions that had no basis in any rational thought and certainly no basis in anything that we collectively as human beings should be doing. And, of course, they were ignored by Tony Blair and George Bush and Powell, who just died, you know, and Rumsfeld and the rest of them and Walter Witts and the whole of the neoliberal establishment and plot. And, but, unfortunately, they have the backing of the big corporations. And, in consequence, they feel they can do anything they want. It's like these judges. The fact that Mr. Barrett's and... Louis A. Kaplan and Loretta Preska in positions of power in judicial systems in countries that claim to be civilized and demonstrate.
demonstrate a depth that is nanometers thick. There is no moral depth to their understanding of the law or what it might be about. You know, so th these are the times that we live in. Why don't my fellow musicians stand up for the Palestinians or for the Ecuadorians or for each other or for the working class? or for the blacks or the browns or the Hispanics or the Polish or whoever it might be who's under the jackboot at any particular... I don't know. I guess... I think, I think it's important there, what you said about corporations, death. because, I mean, you must know... I mean, off the record, actors, musicians, they say to me, they, they contractually have to abide by no politics uh, in public clauses, some of them. We've got there, we've got to, we started talking about Paul Robeson and we know how hunted down he was towards his, to, to his death. Uh, nowadays, uh, Hollywood, for instance, can actually uh, stop actors and kill their careers, right? Uh, I mean, it, obviously Gene Seberg, they did it there uh, when uh, she married a, a black man. But uh, talking about Palestine, we've got Mike Lee coming on, uh, the film, British film director who was nominated for Oscars and won Palm Doors and so on. He didn't even, he's a very uh, uh, pro-UN resolutions on Palestine. Even he, I, I detected a little bit of reticence there, even with him to talk about Palestine. I know, Roger, you got into a lot of trouble talking about your support for UN Security Council resolutions on Palestine. No, I haven't. Palestine. It saved my life, Astrid. <laughs> it saves your life. When you stand up to be counted, I, stood, I sat and played the piano with Randy the other, you know, for Julian, actually, Two nights of what keeps me alive, that saves my life. I cannot, I, can't, I can't believe what it would be like not to stand up and be counted. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't take it. I mean, it, I do understand that some people find themselves in situations where um, if, if they raise their voice, they're going to be shot dead. You know, and, and I can understand that you, one might be afraid under those circumstances, but there are an awful lot of people always in those circumstances who go, no, they're wrong. Which, and I am, which is why Julie Latour is such a... And Randy, we're part of a resistance to this book. Yeah, which is what... Which is why Julian Assange is such a martyr. And, uh, and as been yeah. said before, he got nothing out of it. I think that's... Uh, uh, been said by people. He he was doing this for humanity. He wasn't doing this for any personal, uh, you know, uh, financial benefit or anything like that. All he was There's doing this was for us. Up earlier, Ashid, which I want to which I want to not throw back at you, but say, yeah, please, let's talk about that more. The fact is that at the end of the Kangaroo Court, the Barretts Show trial, she didn't come out with the correct uh, interpretation of the law, which was to say, at the first 10 minutes of this trial, Assange should have been free because this is a political trial. And it's in article, oh, paragraph 4, article C or whatever, of the extradition agreement between the United States and the UK, that, it, that they ca nobody can be extradited for an offence that has political connotations. So it should have been thrown out that first morning, because it wasn't, because she's a puppet. She's a puppet. She's, her job is not to interpret the law, or her job is to do as she's fucking well told. Ooh. And she's done it. So at the end of the day, when she should have said, no, he's, no, he can't be extradited, it's political, or no, he can't be extradited because he's committed no crime, or no, this is bullshit, which is what she should have done, she mealy mouth said, oh, he can't be extradited because he might kill himself. What a crock of shit. Oh. That's why the United States is appealing now. Instead of, if she'd actually had the balls to say, he's an arch criminal and must be killed, at least the Assange team would now be appealing that decision rather than Americans appealing the fact that he can't be extradited because he's a suicide risk. All right. Well, Sorry. well. Listen, uh, that what, very well said, Roger. Look, look. Uh, joining us right now, we have a surprise guest, and that is the uh, father of Julian Assange, who was at the uh, courthouse today. Uh, John, can you hear us? 
John yes, Shipton? Yes, I'm here. Good. All right. Hi, Randy. And we Hi. also have Katie Halper on the line, but we're going to go to you, John, first. Uh, and you know what? Afshin, you were there. Uh, why don't you uh, go ahead? I'm, gonna, I'm going to defer to you to ask John the first question. <laughs> I, was, I was only there remotely. I, I saw the clip. It's a good story. enough. It's good enough. And it was, it was obviously heartbreaking for people all around the world who could see, see what was going on. I mentioned earlier that at least there were some more mainstream media people on the uh, remote, even the Guardian newspaper, uh, bothered to uh, tune in. Um, I, what can I say, John? Uh, um, what did you think of seeing your son on the remote picture there, who was only there intermittently uh, for, for a smaller uh, amount of the time than the actual hearings went on, because he clearly couldn't face being there? Well, uh, you know, couldn't really see him because he was the, the uh, chair doesn't expose where he sits doesn't expose his face much to the camera. I don't think he was much interested in being seen. But, uh, Can you speak a bit louder? Overall, I can't really uh, hear you, mate. Can you speak up a little bit louder, John? Yeah. Uh, over, uh, overall, uh, I agree with Roger's position that it's a trap that the, uh, Judge Baritza's decision uh, was flaccid. Um, and also uh, prepared and uh, tactically suits the Americans because, or suits the Department of Justice, all of their, all their grounds were agreed with, with the exception of sending Julian to one of their dungeons, their hell holes that they have in the United States. I believe there's 80,000 prisoners in the United States in one form of solitary or another. There's only 50 in uh, SAM's Special Administrative Measures, which are saved for those men and women who are arrested under, uh, uh, under uh, espionage charges. Oh, you know, Julian would be automatic because the reasoning they give is that Julian or anybody under the espionage charges may reveal the names or reveal more of the information that they that they have that they ch that they're charged with. It's just absurd. Equally absurd was the prosecutions speaking about uh, assurance. United States when all of us face the fact that the, the United States gave us the DOJ, gave, the, the Department of Defense gave us assurances that uh, uh, Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. Well, that's one assurance that we all know is fake and there are many more of them. What we read in the in the, on the blogs nowadays is that those people, meaning the uh, administration, not the people of the United States, the administration, are uh, not agreement capable. So any agreement that you make uh, with the United States is worthless. There are nine cases that I know of where the United States has made assurances that prisoners will not be housed in this way or that way and as soon as they arrive in the united states that's completely ignored so you, that was one proposition you, you of must the, of the go on sorry i'm sorry i mean, but I, I you got cut off there for a second so continue uh, talking I'm, i i didn't mean to interrupt no. The second uh, prop proposition was that uh, the chief psychiatrist for the defense, Professor Koppelman, uh, was, uh, was inadequate and shouldn't have been given weight by the, uh, by the judge in her judgment. The weight should have gone to the prosecution's psychiatrists. Well, that would be sort of ridiculous, wouldn't it? Um, and that in sum, it's sort of like this. The Julia, uh, consequently, that Koppelman's 
findings are weak. Uh, it's as absurd as that. So in both aspects of the prosecution's case, they were, were, uh, were completely unsupportable. Tomorrow we'll have the defence's case where those nine cases of uh, assurances given by the United States will, will, be dem will be demonstrated that they're utterly valueless and the re-examination of Koppelman's evidence will be made. Also, the uh, prosecutor took the uh, opportunity to attack, uh, uh, to attack uh, Stella and the children. I mean, talk about this week. Um, Stella, who has been, you know, a loyal uh, wife to Julian and a, a superlative mother to those children being uh, attacked in court is, is just, uh, you know, it's beyond a com the pale. Complete disgrace. Uh, we're yeah. talking to John Shipton. We're talking uh, the father, Julian Assange. We are talking with Afshin Ratanzi of uh, Going Underground on RT and uh, legendary uh, composer, activist, uh, Roger Waters. Uh, I wanted to ask you, and, and Katie, I know you're on the line, but let me just uh, ask uh, John uh, this. Um, seeing him in that courtroom, I know I've seen you there. I was there last year. I, and you have this phlegmatic, uh, you know, personality and you're able to, it, it's, I, I don't want to dig into your emotions, but I, obviously it must be difficult to watch your son going through this now over the last 10 years? Well, if you contemplate that, of course, you sort of collapse into melancholy and, and depression and, you, you know, you're sort of confronted with uh, resurrecting your own psychology. Uh, so I don't, I don't bother with that. What I do is I just work. Yes. And I attend to things as they come before me, and that keeps me out of the, the devilment of melancholy. I save the melancholy for uh, after dark and uh, a, a glass of wine or a, a nice whiskey, and then I uh, contemplate the, the pains that, uh, that uh, a parent feels or all parents feel. But I have in my mind the image of a father in Baghdad holding up his daughter who looked to me about six or seven years old with both her feet blown off and her life blood dripping to the floor and the horror that w would be in his heart. So I, I, I the, the suffering that... Uh, the, the Department of Defence and the administration has brought upon the people of the Middle East is a, a pall of grief that hangs above the, the Middle East like a black cloud. And so, you know, it's relative. I have a job to do and I do it the best I can and I don't uh, indulge myself in worrying about my own feelings. I just worry about uh, getting Julian out of the shit that he's in. You know, I, I must say you really have worked very hard, uh, nonstop. Uh, you're indefatigable. I remember um, uh, last year I saw you there and then here in, in New York in that uh, long home run for Julian um, extravagant, I mean, you know, cross country uh, pilgrimage that you were on. Um, I, I'm going to go to you. And by the way, there's a film coming out that's produced by your son, Gabriel, called Ithaca. It will open up, I believe, in Melbourne or Sydney in, in November. Uh, I want to go to you. Uh, and it's you and Stella um, uh, are featured in it. And, and so let me go to you, you Roger, uh, to ask uh, John a, a question if you have one. No, I'm just sort of reeling uh, at the depth of my admiration for John Shipton and uh, his extraordinary eloquence. And I find myself uh, sort of immured, um, even in his description of his melancholy. And when he brings up the father in, you know, in Baghdad or wherever with a dying child, I 
come a little bit close to collapse. So uh, let's bring let's Katie. Bring Katie. Yeah, Katie can liven it up a little bit here. Katie Halper is the host of the Katie Halper Show. Also, um, useful idiots with Max Taibbi and uh, a longtime host here at WBAI. Uh, Max Taibbi. Uh, Max. Max. Matt. I said Matt Taibbi. Uh, would you uh, welcome uh, Katie? Uh, I'm sorry to keep you uh, waiting for so long. Oh, no, it's okay, of course. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Yes, well, uh, you did spectacular the other night at the uh, stand ups for Julian. Uh, why don't you kind of weigh in here? You've heard uh, some of this conversation uh, that's been bouncing back and forth. And uh, if you have anything uh, that you'd like to add, uh, please uh, jump in. Sure, and I'm so so sorry for what you are going through, um, John. Um, My heart really goes back to you, and I'm so grateful for everyone else who's on the line now speaking truth to power and standing up for Julian Assange and also for Stephen Donziger. And it's a dark day, not surprising, sadly, but it's a dark day in history. And I think people are going to look back on this, and and there's going to be a lot of shame for everyone who calls themselves... uh, a truth teller or an advocate for truth and justice and who's remained silent. Um, And something that we need to talk about, of course, is the role of the media, the silence of the media, the complicity of the media, um, and how uh, how shameful it is that none of the people who should care just out of self-interest about this and about the attack on free speech and a free press, they're so silent, they're complicit in this attack on the fourth estate and, you know, I'm just struck by how Trumpian the media is behaving. Um, You know, this is a media that spent um, so much time justified, I mean, for the wrong reasons, I would say. There's a lot to be angry about Trump for, but a lot of it was about the decorum and the form. And here you have an attack on the fourth estate, and all these people in the media who claim to care about that are silent or they're cheering on the persecution of Julian Assange. And, you know, for those people out there who consider themselves fans of Obama, they consider themselves um, people who support the rule of law, and uh, they like that Obama was this Harvard law professor, I think they need to be asking themselves why they are taking the side of uh, Donald Trump and Mike Pompeo. You know, as we know, whatever your thoughts on Obama were, uh, he's someone who, who stopped, uh, decided to not pursue Assange. Uh, he certainly did not do enough. He should have freed Assange. Um, but because of this, you know, New York Times problem where you can't go after Assange or you shouldn't be going after Assange for things that um, other outlets uh, publish, you know, I think that at least Obama had kind of the concern with the optics there. Now you have the Biden administration, Merrick Garland, going along with this Trumpian attack on Julian and a Trumpian attack on the fourth estate, and it's incredibly shameful. And I hope I'm not being naive when I encourage people to call uh, the Department of Justice. Uh, The number there is 202-353-1555. Again, that's 202-353-1555. And um, I urge people to urge Merrick Garland to free um, Julian Assange as well as Stephen Donziger and stop these kind of twin attacks on people who dare to take on corporate power or state power. Sorry if that was a little... No, no, that's fine. Uh, That was very well said. Um, uh, I want to ask you, John, uh, what is your message uh, to the American people? What what can we do on this side uh, of of the ocean? You know, the wonderful thing out of the United States that we all admire is the First Amendment. And to help us the and help, of course, the American people and people everywhere in the West is to support and assert the right of the first, the rights that are given under the First Amendment. Also to assert that right across corporations and government to stop this absurd censorship of people like Roger and yourself that can be removed from having a voice by a rather second-rate administration of a social media organisation 
these are two things that will help us and will help yourself. Right. Help American people. Yeah. Let me uh, mutual help. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I'm disappointed. And I know you're an Australian. Um, is there any movement there in support that that is beginning to snowball, or is it as uh, dry as it is in this country? Well, the, no, the, we got a rising tide in Australia. There's 217 MPs in divided into two houses, the State House and the, the Commons, and that uh, has uh, 30 supporting MPs. And an interesting phenomenon is that, that they're all cross-party so that the original quality and beauty of the parliament begins to emerge under the influence of Julian's activists. And that is that it's cross-party and the sovereign majesty of the parliament can feed into the parliament and ask the, exec ask the executive, that is, you know, the prime minister, etc., ask the executive to attend to the concerns of parliament. Normally, as we all understand, Parliament is pulled to bits by the envy of all the other players and institutions so that as a, an institution it loses a lot of its authority and power. But the phenomenon under Julian's activism in Australia has reasserted some of the original charm of uh, parliamentary governments. So that's the situation in Australia. Well, that's, There's a rising tide of support. That, that's really great. Uh, that, I, I see it. I feel it there. And, and Afshin, let me ask you, uh, you're a keen uh, uh, you know, a viewer of what's happening there on, on the local level. Uh, what is it, uh, not just you know, in, politically, but on the streets, what, what, what kind of uh, momentum uh, do you see? Is it shifting? Is it, uh, do you see it getting any better for Julian in the UK? Yes, uh, we have learned. Uh, is that me? You no, asked ask me? Afshin, or Afshin, Afshin. <laughs> I, d I defer oh, okay. to Julian Fryer always. Hi, Afshin. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. John, I'll share a glass of wine or whiskey with you on Thursday, hopefully, after this is over. But like Katie said, uh, it might be naive to call the Justice Department and Merrick Garland was testifying today. I can ask you a naive question. Uh, any chance that uh, he, he might be granted bail regardless of any uh, decision? Because they won't give a decision tomorrow, probably. And what do you think of the arguments? We haven't heard the arguments of the WikiLeaks defense uh, team really we heard edward fitzgerald qc saying something about i don't know almost trying to get in the good books of uh, the uh, judge there saying look you already decided on this before on the on the mental health issues why are you uh, why you should be believed the first time round um, is that is that the strategy given that they can't talk about media freedom because you already ruled that out and i should also say rt came up and the show that was done, uh, that Julian Assange made, and they were using his TV show that he did against him as well as his own children and partner. Uh, well, you know, the arguments of the prosecution were sort of empty. He's got nothing to go by. And he recycled his cross-examinations of Koppelman uh, from the uh, hearings uh, back then in September. That's all. He had nothing. He's got nothing. Well, the judges paid polite attention to him. You know, uh, I feel that uh, uh, because they've appointed uh, the Chief Justice of England and Wales to, uh, uh, to the bench and the most powerful judge in England and the UK and Wales, so this has meaning. And his decisions will be hard to appeal. So I assume that the historical or, or practice of supporting a lower court judge's discretionary judgment will continue and Julian's non-extradition will be held by the court. I assume that. 
That is, the, the, um, if things go as they uh, have done historically, that Julian will not be extradited. The judge will say we'll support her decision and then the Americans may uh, uh, attempt to appeal. However, appealing against a decision of, uh, of the Chief Justice of the of the United of the England and Wales will be a difficult thing. I assume also that the United Kingdom wants to get rid of this case uh, as it's caused nothing in, but embarrassment and looks as though it will continue to cause nothing but embarrassment. Edward Fitzgerald tells me that there's Article 3 that they can uh, take to court. Also, there's the counter-appeal, which will expose all of the wretched behaviour of the FBI in Iceland and the CIA in, the, in Spain and in the... Uh, Ecuadorian embassy will all be canvassed all over again. And I also assert that if the case went to the, uh, uh, the United States, every large media organisation would have to be on the side of Julian Assange because nobody wants the example of an espionage case against a journalist and publisher to be successful. The entire mess that they've made of their, uh, their, well, let's start from the Swedish prosecuting authority bringing disgrace upon themselves the Crown Prosecuting Service bringing disgrace upon itself in the, in the conspiracy with the Swedish Prosecuting Authority to extend Julian's stay in the embassy for seven and a half years. I remind everybody that Julian's lawyers took, <laughs> took the Swedish Prosecuting Authority to the federal court in Sweden in order to in order to advance the case. The scandal, the deluge of misdeeds in the, in the treatment and prosecution of Julian is endless. And it's bringing uh, disgrace upon all of the people involved. So I assume that they've put in the Chief Justice... Right of, the, of uh, England and relieve the United Kingdom of further disgrace in this matter. You know, uh, John, uh, that's true. Uh, you know, Roger and I were talking uh, recently about, uh, you know, singing to the choir. I mean, Roger, ha ha do you think it, that's the uh, where we go? We continue to sing to the choir uh, to keep them uh, motivated? Or is it useless to try to use reason on uh, people in media and uh, those in power? Well, I, I don't see that we have any alternative, uh, frankly, because un until we rise up as one and let our voices be heard and sing in harmony and make such a powerful noise that it is understood by us, by the choir, by each other, that we, the people, have the power if we choose to exercise it. Unless we do that, we might as well, oh, I, I don't know, just go and drink two or three bottles of cognac and die. You know, because because the way the way this, this charade is organized is that the, all we can do is raise our voices. That's the only thing that we can do. And we must, and we have to hope. I think John just told us that is it only 30 members of parliament in, in the Australian parliament that has 217 that have joined together um, to to be active on behalf of Julian Assange? Was I right in hearing? Yes, that? yes, 30. Yeah. 30. And, and yes, th 30, Roger. Okay. Well, it ain't enough, obviously, because when, when I, I listened to this, and I, I was extremely interested in what John was saying and, and about the embarrassment of the, not, not just the government of the United Kingdom, but the people. I'm English. I am embarrassed. I am ashamed. I am so ashamed of my country that they've got Julian Assange banged up in their prison 
and that the people haven't risen up and set him free. I, I can't believe that it hasn't happened. And you, and you have to keep thinking, why hasn't it happened? And um, because it's cut and dry. It's not as if this was a difficult thing to try, even in the mind of an individual. You only have to look at the evidence. I tell and to Mr. anybody with an IQ above room temperature, it's perfectly obvious that this is a completely innocent and also very valuable man. Yes. There are people from all over the world, I should say, in answer to Randy's question, uh, out there. I'm sure John uh, saw them. But, I mean, I suppose, saying to what Roger just said, there really is a kind of media blackout about this case. Yeah. It really feels like that. I mean, it's today about on all Twitter... These cases. It, sorry. T today the on media Twitter... Media about all of it. Nobody... No, there is no... Uh, there is no out. Colin Powell dies last week, and there's a few little mealy mouth things about, yes. oh, what a lovely fellow he was. No, he wasn't. He was an arch criminal. He sold and out to the devil. Katie? And Today on Twitter, and if you search for Assange, you come up with, for some reason, the word arrested is coming up. Right. So it's, it's yeah. media, it's social media. Um, and I would just say one thing in terms of the choir. I think that we have a case of you know, this is WBAI and this is the choir, but we have to make sure the choir is motivated and singing as loudly as possible. But also in terms of reaching out to other people, I would say there's a kind of uh, Trump derangement syndrome. I think that's a word, that's a term that's been used by the right wing, but the left needs to, to come up with our own term for that. But um, there's a case of brain worms that we see, and I think it is important to tell people who aren't already with us, and I hope people aren't too disturbed by this because this is, a very unprincipled stance, and this shouldn't matter. But what uh, what Julian's being charged with has nothing to do with 2016. It has nothing to do with Trump. And a lot of people, their brains just shut off the second they think that it has anything to do with Trump or Hillary Clinton. So that's just a, a very important point. It's, again, it's not the most righteous principled point. But I think in terms of reaching people who aren't already with us, it's important to remind them of that. Also important to remind them of the fact that this undermines democracy abroad. All you have to do, if you are a dictator, you're oppressing your people in another country, and anyone tries to call you out or, uh, you know, highlight the fact that you're oppressing uh, free press, all these people need to do is point to what is happening in, you know, with England, the United States, with the participation, complacency of Australia, and they are exonerated, and they are, get to call, you know, the West, rightly so, hypocrites. So that's another thing. And again, if there were any decency, if, the, if our legal system, our justice system meant anything, the fact that you had the um, main testimony of this case based on the key witness who we now know lied, who is a convicted sex offender, um, a young man who is a victim of his sexual um, uh, crimes committed suicide, and this is the star witness of a case against someone, the fact that we know the CIA talked about kidnapping and murder, and the fact that the United States isn't ashamed and isn't running away from this case and hasn't dropped it, again, people will look back on this, and it will be so embarrassing and humiliating, and people need to be reaching out to other people, they need to be talking out. Um, and speaking out, because we cannot let this happen. It is such a travesty. Well, we're, we're going to keep uh, doing what we all do. Um, uh, we have like uh, five minutes left. I'm going to go to you, Afshin. We just heard from uh, Katie and, uh, and from Roger. Uh, give us, uh, you know, uh, a conclusionary, uh, you know, peroration here uh, before well, John takes it so, home. Yeah, it's, it's so important, uh, I suppose, what Katie said about the fact that uh, uh, the, the U.S. public is so duped by all this Trump stuff that they think it's somehow connected uh, to Trump and these different issues, when, of course, this is free speech. And it should be said that given the United Nations claims that he has been tortured by British and American uh, authorities, it means, in effect, that whistleblowers for torture anywhere in the world uh, who go to the U.N., Britain and the United States will will uh, connive with them, let alone, of course, uh, the uh, revelations about attempts for gun battles in the central London uh, to, to maybe kill uh, Julian Assange. So the number of precedents here for what may happen if, if the worst happens 
uh, is appalling for all mass media, for torture, uh, for the authorities. I know Roger mentioned uh, the Prime Minister here, Boris Johnson. He was a former journalist. And uh, uh, it certainly does show so far that British authorities uh, are yet again proving that this country is, a, is an aircraft carrier of the United States. There seems to be, uh, according to the Judge Barreto's decision, nothing about free speech in this case. It was as if it had come straight from Mike Pompeo and the CIA. So if this case goes the wrong way, that is the end of uh, uh, all free speech. Uh, yeah. I know lots of people have said there hasn't been uh, for long right. enough. This is the end. At least uh, the semblance of democracy. John uh, Pilger said it's the end of democracy. Uh, uh, John Shipton, um, you have the uh, final words here. Uh, so uh, what do you have to say about it uh, to the uh, public? Uh, you know, kind of you, uh, Randy. I'd just like to thank Roger and Hapson, who, for some reason or other, uh, in a mysterious way, we've all become firm friends, although we've only actually known each other briefly at events. Uh, and uh, I see that uh, Roger married again the other day, or, and uh, I was quite moved uh, and uh, felt uh, good for him and Hapshin. Uh, I've been on his show a couple of times, but uh, I follow Hapshin on WhatsApp and we occasionally chat. And Randy, similarly, I have shared uh, broken bread with you and had a glass of wine up there in the Catskills. So I feel the same bond with all of the people across uh, the United States, the United Kingdom and Europe and Australia who have joined us in, in this uh, march, in this noble task to bring freedom to Julian Assange and to return our institutions of state to decent behaviour under the auspices within law and those great civil artifacts that were brought into being in, after, after the horrors of the war in 1945, the United Nations, the Universal De Declaration of Human Rights, the Conventions of Asylum ratified under the authorship of Australia of all places in 1973 in the UNGA, in the United Nations General Assembly, reassert those values and emerge once again and see the stars. Well, that um, was very well said. I, I want to thank all four of you, uh, Katie Halper of the Katie Halper Show and the Useful Idiots, Roger Waters, always uh, wonderful, uh, great to uh, hear from you again. And uh, Afshin Ratanzi, you'll keep us posted. I know you'll be monitoring this uh, tomorrow, and uh, maybe we'll be doing this again uh, soon. Uh, hopefully it will be on a very good note. John Shipton, uh, my love goes to you and uh, both your kids. We're going to take a quick break here. Thank you all for being part of this special edition of Live with the Fly. And we'll be right back. Uh, after this, this is a piece by Niels Melzer. It's not by Niels Melzer. It's by uh, Ludwig uh, Be Be Beethoven. It's his version of Moonlight Sonata. <laughs> 